It's time to prep for lifting the engine. Wrenches won't do diddly on this beast. All up. And that's ready to go. This 16-cylinder powerhouse has some of the biggest bolts on the locomotive. This is a spline drive. It takes out the bolts that don't want to come out with nothing else. These spline drives tackle the toughest jobs using 2,400 Newton meters of torque. There ain't too many bolts it won't take out. But it's not just the bolts they have to remove. They must cut old fuel lines connected to the engine through the bottom of the frame. The smallest on the team gets assigned this dirty duty. The smallest, but the best looking. But you gotta finish cutting this in half so when we pull the engine, the pipe doesn't hook up, so it just pull out clean. Got a little bit here left to cut, and then this will be done. It's a messy job, but someone's got to do it. Fourteen thousand kilograms of steel is hoisted into the air as the crane rips this loco's heart out. Bring it west. North a little. Take it Rebuilt, north. the engine could be worth up to 120,000 euros and run another 50 years on the rails. Good. But this loco's gonna get something much more powerful a genset engine. These things will be Lawrence done. and Stephen Beale are pioneers in a new locomotive technology. Genset technology, short for generator set, focuses on fuel efficiency. Instead of using one large engine and generator all the time at full capacity, a series of smaller engines and generators are used only when needed. An onboard computer monitors the horsepower and starts and stops the engines accordingly. If a lot of power is needed, all of them kick in. Otherwise, the rest stay off. The result? Over 35% reduction in fuel consumption and more than 85% fewer emissions of some greenhouse gases. Production supervisor Tom Bonner oversees the genset operation. Enviro motives is what we call them. In other words, their, their fuel efficiency is much greater. Their, their uh, sound decibels, dBs, is much lower. What we've done is uh, basically rewrite how locomotives are being made and produced. Uh, the whole concept of what a locomotive is, we've changed it. And they're about to change this locomotive. But before they build her back up, the breakdown boys have to remove one last component, the Locos operational center, the cab. The team is down to Kenny and Tim, and they've got a tough task to complete. The electric hardest part on getting this cab off. No rookies today. This is a dangerous operation. This loco cab is comprised of the nose, the driver's console, and an electrical cabinet, which is basically the back wall of the cab, all welded tight together. And it's full of insulation and electrical wiring. The team's goal is to remove the cab in two lifts. First, the nose and driver's console then the electrical cabinet. But before they can get to work, Kenny's got to get rid of four 90 kilogram batteries from the bottom of the cab. He opts for the forklift because the batteries are an extreme fire hazard when near torches. The danger of the battery is the chemicals that's in it. You know, they, um It'll, it'll explode. Okay, we're gonna have to do a little bit more cutting on that before it come out. 
Don't want to bust them. The batteries are fused to the cab. Kenny's forced to take out the torch. Success. They'll recycle and resell these batteries. Now it's time to rock and roll. Let's get her done. Ay, 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 ay. Kenny and Tim set about cutting apart the cab. It's in bad shape, but they finally cut it free. They're ready for the first lift. For this, the team hooks up her nose and threads padded chains through the driver's console. We good. Huh? We good. No, we're not. We're too much of an angle pulling on that hook. Jim doesn't think it's safe to lift. So they re-thread the chains to distribute the weight more evenly. All 7,000 kilograms of it. All right, Maggie, up slow. Up slow. Oh, 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 cabin's coming with it. Set it down. Set it down. This beast won't budge. Something's not right. All the boats out of there. It's got to be welded somewhere. OK, we let's check we it out real quick. The electrical cabinet is somehow still attached. But the plan is to lift that separately. We'll, we'll get it from up under? Yeah, probably. But it's going to take a while to get this cabinet loose. Cabin's pulling up. Dude. I know. Cable. I yeah, know. but you Why? get up in the air and something give way. I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not taking a chance now. I'm not gonna be unsafe. We can put some old boats back in there. Throw some boats back in them holes. Hey, we, we got boat holes. Go put some boats in it. But I want a lot of boats in it. Jim reluctantly agrees to the option of last resort. Try to pull it all free in one lift. But first, he wants the electrical cabinet reinforced to the cab. What do we need, about 10 of them? No, you need about 20 of them. Another setback on schedule. It's going to be a little while before we pull this. Look on my top box and give me that three-quarter socket in that uh, 3 8 drive ratchet. Tim and Kenny screw in 20 bolts by hand. Hopefully, this will secure the electrical cabinet to the driver's console. OK, Mikey, we ready? What? Hey, go, go up. up. Call it. She ain't going quietly. Kenny. Mike, fix yours up some more. Go ahead. Whoa. But the strategy works. Nose, driver's console, and electrical cabinet break free and one. Back on schedule. Look on my top box and give me that three-quarter socket and that uh, three-eight drive ratchet. Tim and Kenny screw in 20 bolts by hand. Hopefully, 
This will secure the electrical cabinet to the driver's console. Okay, Mikey, we ready. They go up. Call it. She ain't going quietly. Kenny? Mike, fix yours up some more. Go ahead. But the strategy works. Nose, driver's console, and electrical cabinet break free in one piece. That's why I said headache. And Jim's team is back on schedule. We had a good day today. Now if we can get the rest of this stuff off, get it on cleaned up a little bit, it'll be ready for rebuild. With the gut out complete, it's time for the final step of the breakdown. They have to get the frame flawless. Otherwise, they won't be able to build it up because you can't weld on top of rust. It's like going to the dentist except these guys use torches to rid the plaque. And there's a lot of it. It will take them days of sanding, cutting, and scraping to get it ready for rebuild. It's taken Jim's breakdown team just five days to tear this Jeep 9 apart. All that's left is their 17 meter long base frame. In the next seven weeks, this frame will undergo a total transformation as it's rebuilt into a new locomotive with the latest and greenest technology. But first, they've got to move her. Everything looks good. I'd say let's roll it out of here. When you have a yard full of locos, it's a full-time job getting units from point A to B. That's where Tom Boswell and Hubert Carter come in. Their specialty, switching. Keep on rolling my way. With 100 locos and only six and a half kilometers of track, these guys have to switch one out to move one forward. This is like the chess game where we have to move them all around in order to get to where we're going. You, know, you always got to think ahead. And you know, I got to remember where this is at or maybe put this one over here and double back and grab these two. And at first it's kind of hard, but you know, once you do it for a while. All right, let's go my way. Today's game plan, get the stripped frame to the cleanup bay. All right, take it to the blaster room. Take it to the blaster room. And into the hands of Brad Kelly. He's going to strip this 50-year-old frame down to the bone. When they come in the gate, they're nasty, oily, greasy, rusty pieces of equipment. And by the time we're done with them, it takes a long time, but by the time we're done, they're a beautiful piece of equipment. Look like they're brand new. The cleanup bay is like a car wash on steroids. Here, they coat the frame with degreasing chemicals, then blast it with water at a scorching 82 degrees Celsius. When she's good and soaked, they push her into the sanding room. Here, they buff her clean with tiny rock-like pellets made out of coal slag. It strips away the material and all the rust off of it, makes a nice clean surface for the paint to stick. Primer to stick. Ferlin Whittington shoots this out of a blast nozzle at 620 kilopascals. The paint rips right off. This scrub down can be seriously risky. At this force, 
these tiny particles could literally put a hole in you. It'll blast through your skin a lot quicker than it does that paint. It'll go lucky I've done it 11 years and I haven't had it happen to me. <laughs> but I've seen it probably a half a dozen other guys. That it's ate them up pretty good. The frame's new and improved skin is now ready for pickup. Once more around the yard, but this time into building three. This is where the transformation takes place. The buildup will happen from the bottom up in three steps. Step one, the frame fabrication. Remove the wheels, balance the load, and attach the coupler and end sheet. Step two, the body buildup. Place all the locomotive's organs on the frame, the electrical cabinet, cab, and gensets. Step three, the hookup. Connect all the air and electrical lines and give her some wheels and a brand new paint job. Jim has seven weeks to complete the job in order to stay on budget and schedule. First, they need to lift the frame off the wheel assemblies. Out come the wheels, and in go the temporary stilts. These 7,484 kilogram wheel frames, called trucks, are one of the best examples of recycling. Built in the 1940s, these bad boys are continuously used and reused. In fact, trucks like this are no longer even manufactured because with a little upkeep, they last forever. The team will refit the wheels with new traction motors, ready for another 50 years on the tracks. Jim's finally got his frame, stripped clean and primed to go. Now, the body buildup can begin. In the next few weeks, the crew will build a new locomotive on the old Jeep 9 frame. But before they can put anything on it, they must make sure it can handle the load. A loco is designed to be heavy, to keep it on the tracks. This frame must weigh 23,000 kilograms to have adequate traction. Dick Porter's responsible for making sure that weight is balanced throughout the frame. To do so, he adds ballast, or dead weight. Uh, we have to have pretty well the same amount on the front end as the back end. We've got ballast welded all the way down the side for a little light on the front. So what we do, we've got a sealed compartment on the front. We add steel shot to it and then seal everything with an inch and a half steel plate. The base frame is balanced. Now Dick can start assembling the Loco's upper body. I'll be throwing a little bit of dust here. The crew builds the upper framework of their Locos from sheets of recycled steel. Now, the end sheet can be secured to the frame. It must line up exactly over the space for the coupler. As always, project manager Jim Patton's got a hand on it. And it's, this side needs to come up just about a 3 sixteenths of an inch. Putting it on is the easy part. It's the adjusting that really matters. Because every millimeter counts. Especially when it comes to the coupler. Next step, install the couplers. All locomotive and train cars have a coupler on the front and back so they can interlock. Right. Now go up. If they don't line up exactly, the trains cannot connect. You gotta have your the knuckle at a certain height on front and back with locomotives and the train cars, and they won't hook up. They'll have a big problem then. With the frame ready to go, it's time for step two. 
the body buildup. Place all the locomotive's new and improved organs on the frame. The electrical cabinet needs to sit square at the back of the cab area. Jim's there to make sure it's positioned exactly right. I have to trim that lip. Both sides need to go your way about three-eighths of an inch. The team must precisely position every component. Oh. Oh. If the measurements are off by a fraction, the final part won't fit, which means taking it apart and rebuilding it again. And right now, Chris Bledsoe is struggling with the nose. Pretty crooked. The way they got the lift and I set up there, it ain't gonna pick up straight. It seems to just be a matter of getting the nose level. Say, we'll get it in there. <laughs> Kevin Villareal's got it covered. We need uh, basically uh, four, one eye bolt on every corner and four different chains so it'll lift straight up and come straight in and level it out. Kevin welds on new lift hooks, evens up the chains. One, two, three, four. And Chris tries for another landing. Oh, perfect! In she goes. Now they've got to secure it. And that means welding. Welding involves a fine steel wire fed out the end of a tube, while at the same time, a bolt of electricity shoots through it. It melts the wire on contact into a steel puddle, creating an incredibly strong bond. This fuses all the steel together so it can withstand weight, strain, and weather for another 50 years. No one gets more excited to weld than Mr. Kenny Lucas. This is my girl, Betty. Yeah, this is my baby. She's such a sweetheart. She she just performs well, you know what I mean? I mean, really. Betty is my welder, my welder. Don't nobody use Betty but me. Betty is like a Cadillac, Escalade. She got six inch rims on her. This is my little glove box with my cup holder and thing. My little hooks to hang my leads and welders. I got a storage compartment under the bottom, you know, where I can put all my little gadgets and stuff. With a cart like Betty, Kenny can make metal melt and sparks fly. But if the weld is not done properly, it could jeopardize the entire structure and safety of the locomotive. It's an art. It's gotta be an art, you gotta be good at it. Because structurally, you're taking two pieces of metal and making one solid piece of metal out of it. And if it's got any holes or flaws in it, your structure's not safe. Some welders, they can just lay it down and it looks like a machine did it. This is perfect. It's like a beautiful woman, man. It's just perfect. The loco is shaping up pretty nice. With the nose now secured, it's time for the final component to go on. This beast is about to get the ultimate heart transplant. The build-up room is a busy place, with multiple projects constantly underway. But right now, there's only one in the final stage. It's about to receive a revolutionized engine, a gin set. Generator sets are the most important components in the rebuild. With this cutting-edge technology, Locos are 35% more fuel efficient and emit 85% fewer particulates. It's up to Don Stewart to fly in this second gen set safely. We 
gonna set a gen set into this hole. That'd be number two gen set. And uh, hook it up, and you're ready to operate. Using his remote, Don must direct 8,600 kilograms of high-tech machinery into a perfectly fit hole. And at around 200,000 euros per gen set, there's no room for error. I'm off five miles, dude. I don't know about the rest of it. It must align perfectly, or it won't connect with the other parts. We're lining up the holes, uh, our bolts that hold uh, the gin set down. You might have an eighth of an inch clearance, that's it. A few final tweaks. And voila, the team's got the gin set in place. With the heart of the loco installed, this moving machine is now at the forefront of green technology. Pretty soon, she'll be ready to roll, but not until she gets her wheels back. That's where the mechanics come in. They maintain the legs of the loco, truck frames, wheels, and motors. They make them as good as new. Each set of wheels stands exactly 143 and a half centimeters apart, the standard distance between the rails in the United States. When the truck, wheels, and motors all come together, the newly assembled unit weighs almost 18,000 kilograms. But that's nothing compared to what's about to go on top of it. Time to bring in the Mega Jacks. To lift a loco, you gotta have power. It's a little off side to side. These 45 metric ton jacks work as a single unit and operate at exactly the same speed to ensure they lift the loco level. We're going to jack up this locomotive. We're going to put trucks underneath it. I think we're good, Stu. Clear for jack up. They crank up the loco and safely slide in the wheels. Tied up on the belt. Right. So far, Jim's happy with the progress. Uh, we're pretty much on schedule. I'm probably a week behind, but I can make that up. It's on to step three, the hookup. And that starts with the electrical lines. This electrical cabinet controls every single aspect of the locomotive. It's basically the brain. Well, everything comes through here, but to blow the horn, it's, a, it's an electrical control that opens the air valve to blow the horn. It'll take electrician Gene Beretta a week straight to connect each and every wire. And concentration is a must. If he gets the wires crossed, the whole lot won't go. While Gene focuses on the wiring, a second team installs the air system. We're just the airmen. We run all the air lines to the locomotives for the brakes, the sanders, the horns, the windshield wipers. All that's run on air. Air is like the blood of the locomotive. Several parts require it. These air lines are made out of copper. At around five euros per kilogram, it's a pricey material to work with. I'm just marking this and cut it because we need it to fit perfect. Every airline must be cut, bent, and fit exactly to measure. And there you have it. Jim's happy. They're in the final lap of the buildup and on schedule. It's finally time to dress her up with some new paint. Ferlin Whittington and his team of painters place stickers over dried orange paint to stencil on the letters of the loco's name. With the stencils in place, 
Now it's time to paint it black. The team suits up for the assignment. And they've learned some tricks of the trade. Uh, putting Vaseline on my face, the part that's open, eyelashes or whatever, you know what I'm saying, because the paint, in the, uh, paint in there, get paint in your eyes or on your eyelashes, it's hard to get off of your face. And when you get done, you just wipe it off with a towel. You don't have to scrub on your face or nothing like that. I'm ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Over the next few days, they spray more than 190 liters of liquid through their blast nozzles. These white stickers will be peeled later on to reveal the orange letters underneath. There's nothing like a brand new paint job. Eight weeks ago, she was a rusty, broken down relic. Today, she emerges as a lean, green, moving machine. Thanks to Stephen Beal and company, with her new genset technology, she'll sail the rails for another 50 years. It makes me extremely happy, yeah. I like watching them go from, from old to new, and uh, just watch it fire up for the first time and move under its own power for the first time. It's amazing every time. And the cycle of loco life continues. Work's done for today. But there's plenty more for tomorrow. Cause locos are born to ride.